that turned into a pretty hectic day. I'd wanted to start cleaning the engine, have the turbo back together, but my friend called and said, hey, I don't want my lawnmower. <laughs> There's one that he was gonna fix up that was uh, slightly damaged uh, during a fire, but not damaged enough to ruin it. Just needs a few parts. So we're gonna bring that home tomorrow. Uh, so we need to make the space we wanted to make anyway this afternoon, because I can park that here while I work on engine stuff here. Um, yeah, so we'll get the trailer out, do a little organization and a um, little parts inventory, kind of remind ourselves of what's in there as well. So I got, I'm going to try this stuff out. Um, it's a degreaser that some people have said good things about and I've never tried it. So for seven bucks, we'll just find out. And then these, I got to imagine they're made in the same factory that makes the Scots because uh, they're the same count, like they're blue. There's 55 sheets to a roll. And Menards has a six pack for $10.99. I usually get the 10 packs for uh, $17.99 at Costco of the Scott stuff. So we'll see if those uh, feel the same. Oh, wait, made in America. So I wonder where the Scott stuff is made. Maybe they're not from the same factory, but I'll find out if I like them or not. It's a good alternative to buy them for less than two bucks a roll, though, if you get them at Menards. So, uh, okay, so last time around, um, I had thought falsely that this direction is less boost and this is more boost and it's actually the opposite so this guy wants to spin that's how it enjoys life um make sure it doesn't touch so when they're open like this your air right your exhaust gases go straight into the fin and straight out the top they're not ideal and then when you have the veins close right and that actuator moves so they'll close like this and now your air is more pushing as it comes out so you get more boost right more spinny and then the, the part that was kind of stuck in my head that was incorrect is that if you had um, like a large truck right these would actually and they're indexed wrong close all the way and that's what causes a lot of back pressure they use it for engine braking and a lot of the newer uh, like f-250s things like that will have it they'll have a variable vein and then here's really good and then there's and you'll hear it right so hopefully that's correct too and i'm not totally screwed up but more to the point is to see how they operate this is you know to limit the amount of boost you're making because it's inefficient and then as they close you get to a point where it's as efficient as it can be so uh, that's the way they run and we'll go over the actuator when i reassemble it at the trailer in place oh i gotta get my little cargo lamp off but i put some of the parts in that degreaser splashed around a little bit put some up here um seems to be working i don't know how well you know, a lot of this caked on stuff I don't think we'd get without an actual eraser, but we can... Where's that ring? Where's that ring? Oh yeah, like I haven't even scrubbed on it and it's already getting clean spots. It was completely black. So I think, uh, yeah, this stuff's going to work really well. So the uh, plan is I'll grab one of my spray bottles over there and we'll start spraying the engine just go from the top down. Uh, with hand brushes and something underneath to catch most of the dripping so we don't hit the floor too and who cares about the floor so <laughs> we'll just start from the top work our way out um, in the meantime we look at stuff okay so most of the interior of the car is in here mm, table saw see there's lots of room if i restack a little bit oh and that propane tank i wonder if it's an empty it's winter time so it's time to trade all those out i think and there's a headliner we can recover. Yeah, we'll some we'll some digging to do. Oh, and then there's the trans old transmission. I need the flanges off of that. Um, so we'll probably pull that out because it's small, right? We can tuck it off to the side, maybe where the power washer is. We'll put that away for the winter as well. Maybe nice to get all this stuff. Because we'll probably we'll use the hoist to lift the engine with its cart up inside. I think that'll work. Uh, and then we can pack the hoist up too. Just give us a ton of space. This guy needs to go in there. Yeah, there's there's a lot of moving around to do. Cargo lamp. It doesn't look like anything's been eating anything. I don't see poop on the floor. Yeah, so might be good. Did I save a spare fuck tire? What am I stupid? Uh, all right. Well, that's neither here nor there. Um, what's in here? 
This might be a good part holder. I think I kept it. Yeah. Well, we don't need to film all this. I'll figure I'd do a dry run with the with the smoker because if I don't take the bricks out of this, it's heavy, man. There's fire bricks lining the bottom of both barrels. Okay, I've got my left hand on the on the trigger for pushing it in. And we're gonna hope this works. I think if I just get it part way down, I can start pushing. Okay. I'm going really slow. I'm gonna let it come down slow on its own. <laughs> I know how to chalk a tire, so I'm just going to go for it. Come on, buddy. Okay, not that slow. I'm going to get crushed to death. Those casters are great. Mm. Oh, I should probably grease all the casters on this engine sometime. Well, not on the engine, but well, yeah, on the left. Because uh, they suck to move around. It's going to be the same as the barbecue, I think. Oh, no, maybe it is a little shorter. We'll find out in a couple inches to go. Oops, I got music on. This one, I think this one I can just lower it a little bit and then it'll just slide in. Okay, so that'll clear the top. I'll just have to give it a little boost from the bottom. Big beast, not coming. Coyotes, I'll go this way. Okay. Yeah, kept the, the hoist out because that, that's the next thing we'll need. We'll need that before we need anything from the trailer because we need it to fit this end of the other car. And I didn't want to have to go get the trailer out again just to get the hoist out. So I think it's smart to leave it here. It's easy to move. This degreaser seems to be doing pretty, pretty well. Um, clean that off quite a bit without even brushing it. So well, we'll put it on everything on this towel, kind of scrub them with the brushes, and then uh, dunk them to rinse them or something like that. Oh, I should put a glove on. Oh, look, here's the old towel. So, direct comparison, they're the same size. These feel a little, like, rougher. The tear about the same. These, yeah, they're really similar. I don't really, I don't think it's going to make any difference which ones I ever use. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I'm happy with that. Clean it right up. So, I think this will work great on the engine. Oh. It just ate right through everything and dissolved it. So I'm sure there's a lot of solvents out there that'll do the same thing if you just let it soak like that, but I don't know. It impresses me enough. These have these two are closer together, and this one's the furthest away. These two are close together. This one's far away, so it definitely goes like this. There's only one way you can actually bolt it in because they're smarter than me. <laughs> so I'm not sure what way I'll be able to tell if those spacers, I don't think those spacers fell off. Well, we'll know if stuff's rattling around.
See, these ones are touching each other, right? So this is where having it vertical helps a ton. So I think maybe we'll move it over to the vise to put the, uh, the ring in place. Okay, so this will be a little easier because they can all just point straight out. You don't have to kind of fiddle with them a little bit for this to drop into place. Um, and what I've found is the easiest is put these on the posts first. And then you can raise them up as you get the ring into place. And it'll kind of hold the ring above these. So, and then remember our dot in this. Wait. Where's our actuator? Oh, it's on the other. You stupid. It's on the other half. So, anyway, that dot lines up with this guy, right? So, locating pin lines up with the, the tooth that moves it. So you want this kind of like that. And then you can pick up a, a ring and it'll pop into place. Pick one up and it'll slide in. And then this one, to kind of, you'll end up coming up a lot further. Hope you can see. Maybe I'll we'll do that on this guy so that it's easier to see. So I'll just take him out. E, come on. Okay. There's so a two are in place. Oh, piece of towel there. There. So now all of them, they're all in a ring and this can slide around. And it's just a matter of, you know, some of them hook. So I'll put a little pressure on it and just start moving it. And eventually you'll be able to push. So this whole side's done. And then I can just work my way around tiny tiny bit of pressure slide each dog bone into its spot boom there you go so now they're all there and this will move everything moves freely you can see the veins poke out uh, and then go the other way so now all we need to do is make sure this is lined up with that dot when we put our top on and everything should operate just fine uh. Might as well get that now. So it might take a little wiggling, but that'll go into this hole uh, and everything should drop into place pretty easily. So if you don't have a vacuum thingy on what's it, what guys will do is they'll unscrew these and get uh, like a gap in between, right? So you end up mounting the plate uh, without this tightened down and you adjust your arm so that there's a gap in between the two and an improper preload will cause all kinds of turbo control issues um, mostly guys will mess with it because they want more boost and the computer doesn't work that way so if you get more boost out of it it's because you're you're tricking it and making it control like crap and you'll go into a limp mode right, dug around and got some vacuum line here's the gauge here's how it actuates and now factory settings officially you should be between three and five inches of mercury so down here by the five uh, it should start to move and then by 18 to 22 it should hit that stop right there mine doesn't open till like six so if we just watch it five six seven it just barely moved so we're moving at seven and if we give it more and more vacuum the diaphragm in there is fighting that spring. And when it hits the stop, right there, well, 20, oh, it still moved. Still moved. So yeah, about 21 and a half. So if we lower it, it should lower that as well, and we're well within the realm to do it. Now we don't need to lock this nut back down until we have our setting right. So I'm just going to get it away from there because we need to shorten it. So it's going to come towards it anyway. God, I don't know how I get it to move last time. I wonder if I undid the circlip and then popped it off and twisted it. Let's try that.
yeah there we go so that's left left that's a little shorter right there yeah it's not too happy when it's already preloaded such a pain with it on the car. Okay. Okay, that moved it right at five. I'm fine with that. And that's 19. Oop, there it touched. 19 and a half. Yeah, 19 and a half. So 5 to 19 and a half. Those are both in spec. I'm going to leave it there, lock it back down, um, and we'll just see how it runs with it back in place. Um, it may actually run fine, because remember, this is a turbo that's happy at higher boost, and I wasn't running it there. I was holding it back to 18. So it may be that you know, I was over boosting because I'm just trying um, unnecessarily to keep it too high. Or keep it too low, that is. So we'll see. We'll give it a once a, the car starts and runs, we'll drive it around with the old tune and then we'll get a new one on it. Cool. Well, I'm satisfied with that. We'll just leave it like this for tonight. I'll do some cleanup tomorrow, picking up a lawnmower to mess with, um, which will put this behind a little more, but who cares, right? It's just, it is what it is. It's going to take time, but it's going to be fine.